Space, the final frontier of mankind and so much room for activities. If only getting there wasn't so hard, because our planet has such a hard time letting go. That is why mankind invented rockets, which I'll explain to you in three parts. Why we need rockets, how to get them to space and how to get them back. So why do we need rockets? Or asking a different question, why don't we just take planes and fly them really high? Airplanes need air, of which in space there is none. Wings don't work without air and more importantly jet engines don't either. They take air from the front, speed it up by burning fuel and then throw it out the back, which in return makes the plane go forward. In space no air means no oxygen, so a rocket needs to carry all of that, the oxygen and the fuel. Basically a rocket is just a fuel tank, with an engine on the back and payload on the front, all riding a controlled explosion into space. Which brings us to the next part. How exactly does it get to space? Going to space means going fast. Really fast. Jules Verne proposed a space gun in 1865, which is hard to build but useful to imagine. If a cannon shoots straight and gravity does its job, the cannonball will hit the ground, shoot it further and it will fly beyond the horizon and hit the ground later. But if you shoot it fast enough, it just won't hit the ground anymore. Instead the cannonball is flying away from Earth at the same rate it is falling towards Earth, which means it will stay in orbit forever. The rocket is the cannonball, and the long exposure of a launch shows just that. Rockets don't go straight up, they go sideways. So rockets need to go fast. How fast? Well, to get a satellite into low Earth orbit, you need to go about 8 km per second, or almost 30,000 km per hour. And how do you get that fast? By burning lots and lots of fuel. The Saturn V, the biggest thing humans have ever shot into space, burned through 15 tons of fuel per second. To add some perspective, this would be the equivalent weight of 6 trucks per second. That is a lot of fuel. In fact, 95% of a rocket's mass is just fuel, comparable to a can of beer, where the beer makes up 95% of the weight and the can just 5. Rockets are often staged, precisely because of this meaning multiple rockets stacked on top of each other. When burning 15 tons of fuel per second, at some point, most of the rocket will just be an almost empty fuel tank. Additional weight you're dragging up into space. So after you've picked up speed with the big guy, continue with the smaller rocket and drop the big one. Which brings us to the last part, getting the rocket to come back. Once you drop the first stage, eventually it will fall back into the atmosphere before crashing into the ocean. Think about this for a second. Imagine flying from London to New York and once you're cruising over the Atlantic, you drop the engines, get serious burns coming back down and then crash on Long Island. A passenger airplane might cost 150 million dollars. If it seats 300 passengers and can only do a single flight, that puts the ticket price north of half a million dollars, which incidentally is about as much as a tourist flight to space costs right now. But instead, the actual transatlantic flight costs less than a thousand dollars, because the 150 million dollar airplane can make the trip tens of thousands of times. We've actually had reusable rockets before, the space shuttle. It was designed to land like an airplane and then be ready for another flight, or at least in theory. The heat shield that was supposed to protect the space shuttle at re-entry had to be completely overhauled after every flight, as did the main engines. The maintenance and checks between the flights became so expensive, some people have argued simply using expendable rockets might have actually been cheaper. Which leads us to SpaceX. The company aims to bring back the first stage of their Falcon 9 rocket and land it upright. Instead of using the engines to speed up, the rocket is now using them to slow down, enabling the Falcon 9 to do a propulsive landing. No heat shield necessary. But landing a rocket is hard. It took SpaceX a bunch of tries to succeed, and without some sense of scale, it's hard to appreciate what's actually going on here. The first stage landing here is 70 meters tall, as high as a 15 story building or a jumbo jet upright. So should you have something or someone to shoot into space, a Falcon 9 launch will cost you 62 million dollars. A large part of the launch cost is the rocket itself, all of the research and development, but also the cost of actually building the rocket. The cost for the fuel however is incredibly low. Elon Musk famously said, the rocket fuel is just 0.3%, about $200,000. So every chance of landing the Falcon 9 rocket to use it again means not having to build an entirely new rocket for every flight. 
as of right now, SpaceX has relaunched a previously landed first stage exactly once, almost a full year after its first flight. It's unclear how much they had to work on the rocket to make it ready for another flight. But still, reusing it has the potential to save millions. And if one thing is certain, the progress that SpaceX and other private spaceflight companies have made in the last years is astonishing. And it has made spaceflight and rockets exciting again, inspiring the world to take on mankind's next great adventure.